Well, it's been about a week and a half since I glued up the first panel, and uh, I wanted to show you a couple of things. First of all, here's one of the, the panels, and if you can see, uh, try to move this around, uh, you get good reflection there. You can see the reflection off there. That's the bleed through of the Unibond going through the, uh, the, the red oak. Red oak being a very porous wood, it just pretty much allows quite a bit of glue to, leak, to bleed through. And that's okay on the structural layers of veneer because I just need to sand those rough and then I can glue the, the finished veneer on. But the finished veneer face, I don't want a lot of bleed through. So uh, when I glue those, I probably am going to use something called blocker. Um, this is a powder that gets mixed with the Unibond 800 in about a 10% ratio for, to the resin. And uh, it, uh, it pretty much thickens the Unibond and, and, and retards its tendency to, to bleed through. Now to test that this blocker is going to work, I've made up a sample piece here. I took a piece of scrap um, bendable veneer or bendable plywood and notice it doesn't bend anymore. It's because I glued a face of veneer on each side and this would be the same structural veneer as I used on the bent lamination. And it's got the same bleed through. You can see the shininess as I wiggle that. So what I want to do is I want to sand both sides of this and then take some sample pieces of the Finnish Rift Sawn veneer and try different combinations of glue and blocker. So what I'm going to do is I'll try, first of all, some of the white catalyst with resin, no blocker added. Then I'll try some of the medium catalyst, again, no blocker added, just to see if the rift sawn has the same kind of bleed through, and if it does, does it make any difference of the color of the glue? If it's a very light glue versus a medium colored glue. That'll be one side of my sample. The other side, I'm going to try two different mixes of blocker. I'll take what is left of the white and red glue and mix, or white and uh, medium glue and mix them together. And then add, first of all, I'll add about a 5% by weight amount of blocker. Try that on one sample and then I'll do a 10% weight, um, uh, you know, blocker by weight on another sample, which is the maximum amount of blocker that, that is recommended. And that way I'm going to get a pretty decent idea of the range of, you know, no blocker or using blocker. Another thing I wanted to show you was, here is the sample of Unibond that was in that little plastic bag on my very first glue up, which is about a week and a half ago. And I wanted to show you just how brittle this stuff gets. I'm just going to take this sample and it just breaks like I always think it's like peanut brittle, very brittle. The Unibon continues to cure over time and eventually gets so brittle that it just will not move. And that's great for a bent lamination because uh, with a bent lamination, you don't want it to, to flatten out over time. You want it to stay bent. And that's why I like to use a very stiff glue for, for a bent lamination to eliminate any possibility that might happen. Okay, so what I'll do is I'm just going to go ahead and make up this sample and, uh, and then we'll see what it looks like. Well, let's see how the sample looks. By the way, you may have wondered what's this stuff here that I keep fiddling with. It's kind of a plastic mesh. It allows the air to flow all around here and it prevents the plastic from sucking up against the, the work and creating air pockets, which, you know, that, that would prevent those, those pockets from actually getting the pressure we need. Okay. Okay. 
Well, what I'll do now is I'm going to go ahead and sand both these sides, um, which will get rid of most of the, the bleed through. At least it'll even things out. And then I'm going to go ahead and put my finish on, which I usually use a shellac finish, very watered down shellac. Um, and to see what the effect is. And that's really what we gotta decide, is how does this look finished? So that'll be the next step, and we'll see what we get. Well, I've put about six coats of shellac, it's probably one pound cut shellac, really thin, on here, sanded between each coat. The last two sandings were with 600 P600 sandpaper, and then finally with a little bit of that white um, abrasive, abrasive pad. And bottom line is, I can't really see a whole heck of a lot of difference between using the, the blocker and not using the blocker, to tell you the truth. They look about the same, and it seems like the adhesion is about the same, so I'll have to decide on whether I want to use the blocker on the final product or not, but at least now I know that visually it doesn't seem to, to make a whole lot of difference on these pieces. Okay, so for the show veneering, I've got my rift sawn veneer laid out. I laid out all nine sheets and I marked uh, where I think the cuts should be. I have enough to do the fronts and backs of each panel for both the altar and the pulpit. And uh, you veneer both sides because the veneer can actually pull on the wood uh, with moisture changes in the atmosphere. So you want both sides to have the same pull so your wood, so your you know, piece doesn't distort. Okay, so this particular piece of veneer, I've got four sheets thick. So I'm just gonna lay out the cut line and you notice I've put masking tape all around both sides of the cut line uh, to help prevent any tear out. But on these pieces, we need the look to be perfect. So I'm not only gonna be really careful on the cutting, but on the budding pieces together, I'm gonna make sure we're book matched and that the, the butts fit just perfectly so that when the veneer is glued on, you don't see a crack between the two pieces of veneer. Um, with four pieces laid up here, I can book match two sets to give me the fronts of both pulpit sides. Here we go, nice clean cut, no tear out. Now what we'll do is put this in our clamping device and run it through the jointer to get both edges nice and straight. Now I've got the two pulpit sides. So to book match, I'll just flip and make sure I've got a good match up here along the length, and I do. And then this is where things change a little bit from uh, when I made the veneer pieces for the, for the structural part of the laminations. I'm gonna use some, just some masking tape to tape together these veneers nice and tight. And then I'll be flipping this over and using the paper tape that I, you know, with the water adhesive, the water soluble adhesive. And uh, boy, this is so tight, it's hard for me to see the line and know where to put the tape, so that's good. That's a good thing. But by doing it this way, I have much better assurance that I'm gonna get a really tight joint. Okay, so with that, I'm gonna flip it over. This will eventually become the glue side. 
and the part with the tape will be the face side. The tape will eventually be removed after all the vacuum bagging is done. I should say the paper tape here. Not to confuse the two types of tape. Okay, so I'm kind of suturing this together. I'm using the thicker non-perforated tape because what I'm looking for is maximum strength and the ability for this tape to shrink slightly and pull the joint together nice and tight. Let me rip off a bunch of these. I'm putting these little suture pieces about every three or four inches. Okay, so I've got those little ties done. Now I'll do full length right down the middle. Okay, I'll let that dry. Thank you.